two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Cut Commandments. What? What's up, world? I'm your boss, Kamal Nuru, aka Zomega Millions. You are now tuned in to Barber World TV. This is episode number 13. I have the pleasure tonight to sit with Arthur Rubinoff of NYC Barbershop Museum. How you doing tonight, brother? How are you, Kamal? Thank you for having me here. My pleasure, my pleasure. Um, I discovered you on Instagram, and um, I saw what you did to the shop, I, and it, it really impressed me because I'm, I'm a guy that really takes to collecting barber antiques seriously. You know, I went to the museum in Ohio. Um, you let me know they have a, a, a museum in Spain. I'm going to get out there soon. Um, and I thought it would be important to have you on the show. I appreciate that. So um, tell our viewers where you're from and what inspired you to be a barber. That's a good question. I'm from former Soviet Union, which is Uzbekistan now. I'm a fourth generation barber. Wow. Okay. I grew up in a barbershop mm -hmm. since seven years old. So your great grandfather was a great barber. Great grandfather, yes. And actually, my father was the first one in Uzbekistan that introduced wash cut and blow dries. Mm. Nobody did it before. Uh huh. You here in America? You no, say no, no, in Uzbekistan. In Pakistan. In Uzbekistan. Uh huh. And growing up in a barbershop, seeing uh, things that barbers can do, and I never knew back in former Soviet Union that uh, barbers used to perform minor surgeries and they used to be dentists. Right. Right. And a right. lot of people don't know until this day when they come to the museum. Uh, you know, we we tell them. You educate them. They go like, it's not possible. So we have, you know, things to prove that they are yes. used to be a dentist and a surgeons. Yes. If if you went to barber school, you should know these things. But the average person, they would, they probably wouldn't. Right. Know. Yeah. Tell me, what's the difference from how old were you when you moved here? I was fourteen years 14 old. Fourteen years old. So you've seen enough of the old Soviet Union. Oh yeah. To know. The, to tell course. me, how was it growing up there? Tough. Tough. Like, give me some examples. Even now in Uzbekistan, there is no medium class people, mm -hmm. only poor or rich. And growing up and having anti Semitic people, mm -hmm. I mean, now it's a little better, but back in the days until 1991, until they collapsed, mm -hmm. it was pretty bad. Right. That's why my father decided to move to America. And what, uh, what did he have to endure? To get here, I'm sure it wasn't easy just to say, I'm moving to America. Well, he had a brother that okay. lived in Austria. Okay. And my, my cousin, she was living in uh, New York City. Mm -hmm. You had to have a relative, a close relative, for them to send you a visa. Then you go through the medical checkups and mm -hmm. a lot of checkups that you have to do. There's a no felony. And uh, it took us four months. Mm -hmm. We went to Austria first that uh, when they did uh, medical checkups. Mm -hmm. And then from Austria, we went to Italy. Mm -hmm. In Italy, we were there for two months also. Im why why Im Italy? Immigration, immigration checkups. Okay. Yeah. These are just the pathway to get Mandatory here. procedures that you have okay. to go through. Didn't know that. Right. And then we came to this country. Uh, my father didn't start working as a barber because there was a language barrier, right. experience barrier. Uh, it took him a year, year and a half to settle down. And then he opened up his first barbershop in Astoria, Queens, which is still in business. Wow. Was, was he able to use his prior experience to come here and then take the test? Or did he have to start all over? Start all over. So he had to go Now to school. they changed the law. Right, yeah. So now they did. Which school did he go to when he got here? He went to Atlas. 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 <laughs> Leo, yeah. Atlas. Everybody that's of a certain age has to, had to pass through Atlas. There was a it legend, was like legendary only, school. Yeah, it was the only thing available in, around these, these this way. But it was a good school. Yeah. It was a good school. Well, I went there to get a license in the beginning, but uh -huh. I knew how to cut since I was, again, 14 years old. Right. I started helping my father when I was nine, sweeping mm -hmm. up the floors, uh, taking appointments, Taking the money and washing the hair. Right. Were you inspired, or it just it was just a natural thing? 
you know, the truth is, I I, I didn't want to become a barber. Mm. And I became a successful jeweler. I used to design for Tupac Shakur. Okay. I used to design for Chris Rock. I saw those pictures you had. In and there. I got robbed two times. Uh. I lost a lot of money. So my father said, my dear son, barbers don't get robbed that often. So why, don't you, ever. why don't you come and help me out? Right. And that's when, when, when I started helping my father. His idea was is to open barbershop, to build them up, and to sell them to the workers. Right. From 1991 until this day, we opened 31 barbershops. Wow. 31 shops. 26 of them still in business. Not under my corporation, mm -hmm. but they're still in business. Some of them closed down. Some of them, uh, you know, got uh, demolished. Uh, but 26 barbershops still in business. And the first barbershop that we opened up in Astoria, mm -hmm. Raphael's barbershop, still there. So when you say you sell, sell them to the uh, workers, did you sell them to one worker or did you sell it to them as a group? No. Some, some workers, they bought them as a partner. Uh-huh. But most majority, just like one barber, he sees, he, he knows the business. Right. He knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. In other words, my father used to say, we cannot lie to you. You can lie to us. <laughs> because back in the days, there was no hidden cameras or anything like that. Right, right, right. Now you can check. Right. But no, no, it's, we used to be one barber. Mm -hmm. So, you, and you started working in the shop at what age? 14. 14. And that was sweeping up and in, in thing. And what, how old were you when you actually started working in the shop as a barber? As a barber, 18. 18 years old. I started and then I dropped it mm -hmm. because I wanted to try something else. Right. And I came back to it around 22. Okay, 22 years old. 22. So you didn't leave for that much long. Not four, two. three, four years I, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what happens after you come back to the shop or... You the inspiration for the expansion, or was your dad the ins inspiration from, for the expansion? My dad. Your dad, okay. He was the brain of the operation, mm -hmm. and uh, he passed away in 2003. Yeah. And your dad's name? Ruben. Ruben. Okay. Ruben, yeah. That's why I changed my last name into Rubinov, so his name is with me for the rest of my life. Oh, wow. And the inspiration that he gave me as far as the antiques, mm -hmm. like I told you, 1991, when he started working and making few dollars, we went to those flea markets, mm -hmm. to antique stores, and he used to buy an antique comb, mm -hmm. a razor, the, the blade. Mm -hmm. So I told my father all the time, like, why are you buying this garbage for? <laughs> he yelled at me. Uh -huh. He goes like, never say that. This piece carries history. Right. You don't know who's been cut by this. Right. I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> a young kid. <laughs> young kid. <laughs> yeah. So I was 28 when he passed away in 2003. Oh, you're pretty young. All the pieces that he had, mm -hmm. it became sentimental to me. Right. So I'm like, I'm not going to throw this out. I'm not going to sell this. Right. And I started buying more. He never bought chairs. Oh, on, he never bought that. big barber poles. Uh -huh. I started buying big things. Right. So you need a storage for it. I started storing in my basement where, where we live in my okay, house. Okay. So now my wife started screaming at me. My mom started screaming at me. And honestly, my family members, I never told them about my idea. Uh -huh. It was inside my mind that one day I want to dedicate this into the barbershop museum uh -huh. in memory of my father and to give respect to all the barbers in the world. Right. I think it's, it's an art. Yes. I mean, I specialize mostly in uh, in, in straight hair. Mm -hmm. I do old-fashioned scissor cut over comb. I do razor cuts. Mm -hmm. As far as designs, I got to give hats to you guys. Right. <laughs> because you you nasty with blades and all that. <laughs> but maybe one day I'll, I'll, I'll learn how to do the, the designs as well. Well, designs are not for everybody. You know, it's, it's not a must. And the average guy is not getting the design. The average guy just wanted to look good and get his nice haircut. So tell me something maybe about what do you have in there that's special? What pieces are, are really standout pieces and special? We have, like I showed you today, uh, 1908, the coking chair. Mm -hmm. How'd made. you get that? 
my wife found that. We were in Las Vegas just for the trip and she was on, 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 on Google looking for things. Mm -hmm. 6.30 in the morning, she started waking me up like, look at this. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it. I'm like, wow, where did you find this chair? So we went to the auction. Mm -hmm. I beat everybody off. Mm -hmm. And when we got the chair, the lady that had it, she goes like, it, they made only 47 chairs in brass, mm -hmm. it's real brass, and three left in the world. Wow. I'm like, no kidding. And then we checked, you can find them in, in nickel and stainless steel, but not in, 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 in bronze. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite piece. And then I just got another one, 1808. Wow. You didn't see that one because it's not there yet. I will let you know when it's gonna be inside uh -huh. the museum. But if you know, if you notice, they have the hydraulics. Right. The 1800 ones, they don't have hydraulics. They, they have one, legs. one, one oh, legs, uh -huh. one standard uh, height. Right. And that's it. It's so, all wooden, it's all nickeled, and uh, it's a beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. Another piece is my favorite is the hot towel sanitizer and a steam machine, yes. which is still working. Wow, that's, that's a rare piece. It's very it? rare. And then the building department wanted to you know, make it work. Mm -hmm. They did not allow us because it doesn't fit the standards. Oh, okay. Because it's on gas. Yeah. So we had to just leave it the way it is. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? We have the blow dryers that Marilyn Monroe used to uh, use. We're not saying that she used it, right. but that's the model the she, brand. Pr yeah, she promoted. Right. We have uh, two of them. And just like small little things. Everything is valuable to me, to be honest with you. Did you get most of the things on at auctions? Because me, when I started, Craigslist was my, my thing. You know, I would be on Craigslist all the time looking for things. And I never went to, per se, an auction and bought anything. Everything came through the mail, through Craigslist. <laughs> Or, or what's that? I'll tell oh, you eBay, eBay. I'll tell you. I, 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 now I can tell the secret because I'm the first one in New York City to open this. Mm -hmm. There is a flea market mm -hmm. called Elephant Trunk. Okay, that's where I got most. I of might my have stuff. to edit that. that I, part don't out. <laughs> I don't care. That's not for everybody. <laughs> okay, so Elephant Trunk. So there's a particular that particular. A uh, flea market. It's Do about they always have barber acres. Stuff? They have a lot of barbering stuff. Right. Yeah. So I usually take a ride Sunday morning at six in the morning. I'm mm. usually first one there. Okay. Okay. Just run around. I'll drive or pay for gas. One day, God willing, go with me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's dope. That's dope. So, what day did you open this museum? It was barber June 15th. June 15th of this year. Yes. This year, June 15th. So, uh, so. You've had the things for, what, maybe like 30 years before you actually opened it up, or is it 20 some odd years? In 2003, I'd say most of the big stuff, like I said, I bought it. Mm -hmm. And from 1991, my father started, like small clippers that you right. saw, the, the scissors, clippers. old scissors, right. the razor, straight edge, the straps. So altogether, I would say, yeah, 26 years. 26 years, amazing. So how is, it's not only a museum, which is also unique, but you also operate as a barbershop. I have to, I have to. <laughs> and I was just out there for five minutes and I saw everybody who walked by stopped and looked, they took pictures. How often do you get walking clientele? Do people think that they can actually get their hair cut there? That's the problem ask? right now, that people confused. They think it's an actual museum. Mm -hmm. And now slowly by slowly, they, they're getting to know that we do perform haircuts. Mm -hmm. And as you saw, the, the museum is for free. Right. Anybody can enter. I didn't want to make this into the money-making machine. Mm -hmm. But again, I have to pay the rent. The rent is not that cheap. That's why I perform haircuts myself. Right. I do have a barbershop across the street. Mm -hmm. I'm there for 20 years. Right. And I do have my own clients that followed me. And it's a different experience. It's a different experience. Uh, we wash, mm -hmm. we serve drinks, mm -hmm. and then what another. What kind of drinks? It's, uh, soft drinks, wine, okay. beer. <laughs> we got some Hennessy, and <laughs> everybody like the Hennessy. Something interesting I invented is uh, 
each customer comes in, he gets his own personalized comb. Okay. Personalized? We give him to go. Okay. So this way the customer knows that it's sanitary, sterilized. Right. And he knows that he, he, he sees that nobody used this comb before. Mm -hmm. People love that. They like that. It's like, remember back in the days they used to do a shaving? Yeah. They never changed the blades. They used to use for 10, 15 customers. Now yeah. it's a different story. Right, right. Now people know that it has to be individual blades. That's right. So now I'm doing individual comb. Yeah, because, you know, most guys don't keep their Marvies uh, jar filled. <laughs> and and technically, they say you're supposed to change that every day. Hey, thank you. And nobody's changing that thing every no. day. And most guys' stuff evaporate out of that jar before it's changed. Um, what else can we talk about, you know, without without people actually getting the visual, although we have some uh, B-roll footage, you know, what's, what's the future plans? Future plans are, I want to help Hospitals, senior citizen homes. I'm building a barbershop on wheels. Okay, barbershop on wheels. I've seen a few a few tries with the barbershop on wheels, but not, you know, directed towards. No, the me personally, home. I want to do hospitals because I remember when my father was ill and he was in the hospital. I knew how to shave. I knew how to give a haircut. Mm -hmm. So I cut his hair and I shaved. But I've seen other people mm -hmm. been there for six, seven months with long hair, with long beard, and nobody can take care of them. Right. So that's what, you know, gave me an idea to do that. Mm -hmm. That's my next project, and I have some people behind me to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one step at a time. Uh, so what are you going to do? Because you're going to outgrow your space in regards to still collecting antiques. What's your plan to... For now, we're going to rotate. Rotate it. And then, God willing... I I had a chance to take the next door, mm -hmm. the corner spot, right. but it's it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. So you know I'm praying. I, I do yoga. I'm very big in uh, believing in uh, spiritual. Mm -hmm. One day that store comes to me. I so understand. we're gonna expand and make the museum big. Right. Then you could utilize more of what you have. It just it's just matter of time. Right. Tell people if they want to donate, because some people might have some things that they want to donate. Well, we have, we're getting a lot of donations right now. Mm -hmm. uh, like I have to pick up one of the Coke in 1929 chair. Mm -hmm. uh, people bringing stuff and a lot of people, the elderly people, they come in, they say, oh, my father was a barber. Mm -hmm. My brother was a barber. He had this. Can, 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 what can you do with this? So to me, it's sentimental. Mm -hmm. We, I'm, 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 I want to do a one wall like a memorabilia, to to put them and also to rotate them as well because a lot of people have donate. So I want to do like every six months, right. if somebody donated, we're gonna have a memorabilia wall, put it up, whatever they donated, and that's how it's gonna go. Where would people send it if they want to make donations? Uh, to to the museum. It's 290 Columbus Avenue between 73rd and 74th Street. Say it one more time. 290 Columbus Avenue. 290 Columbus Avenue. New York, New York. What's New York. the zip code? 10023. 10023. Got to give everything. Be clear about some of these things. Um, got to the museum. You're getting the donations. Um, how have you seen the industry change over the years that you've been in it? And then the barbering, Barber, yeah. it became a trend. Like even when I opened up my shop on 74th and Columbus in 1999, guys, like, okay, barbershop, barbershop, but I go to salon. Yeah, it was a time where all the it guys like go that. to salon. I, I go to salon, I go to Jeffrey Stein, I go to Scott J. But now they're realizing that barbers, first of all, it's a social club, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, as you know, we like psychiatrists. Yes. I remember when in the, the September 11 occurred, a lot of businesses went down, but barbershops, 35% went up. Yeah. And a lot of people ask me a question, why? A lot of people lost jobs. Mm -hmm. They went for interviews. That's right. They have to look good. That's right. Then I have, I have customers for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. You become like brothers. Damn. You go out on drinks. You talk with something that you don't talk to everybody. 
Yes, things personal they can't stuff. talk to their wife about. Yeah, personal <laughs> stuff. Right. Uh, advices, decisions. Or just to complain. <laughs> so t- to me, it's, 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 it's not just a job. Mm-hmm. My father always tell me, son, whatever you do in life, do it for the love, out of love, mm-hmm. and the money will follow you. Mm-hmm. And within years, I became mature. I'm a father of two myself. Mm-hmm. I realized one thing that anything we do in life, we have to love. Right. Of course. I mean, I mean that's the and, ultimate. And goal. even I also train people. First thing I ask them: Do you want to do this just because you want to make some money, mm-hmm. or you want to do this because you love it, you like it? If a person says, "No, I need some money. I want to," you know, I'm like I'm sorry, I cannot take you mm-hmm. because I do individual one-on-one, one-on-one, training. one-on-one only. Mm-hmm. And then when the person says, I love it, I love, I want to do this. I see, I feel the passion. You got it. Come in. Yeah, because the people that want to do it, they're going to get it. And you know what? They become creative. Yeah. I have the student right now that she's picking up within weeks. Within weeks. Like you show her one time, she picks it up. Mm-hmm. And you say you got children. Any any barbers coming after you? One, yeah, one is yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fifth generation. My older one, yeah. Uh-huh. My son is cutting hair now too. He didn't want to, but you know, I think this profession. You know what? Also, my father, and again, my father is a role model. Mm-hmm. He's my icon. Right. Uh, he said one interesting thing: a barber can feed his family even in the desert. Yeah. Anywhere we go in the world, we can find a job. That's right. We can make a living. Yeah, if so. you're a doctor or a lawyer, you can't. You have to go again to get a bar exam. You have to go to school again. Right. Barbering, no. You got your hands. You got your tools. You're ready to go because hair is hair. That's right. You got, you got to come off. Nobody's going to walk around like Wolfman. No. <laughs> not, not anybody that wants a job. Huh. Yeah. What would you say to young, inspiring barbers? Do what you do. Love what you do. The most important thing is... Uh, like there's a saying why God created 24 hours a day. Do you know why? Tell me why. Eight hours for us to sleep, mm-hmm. eight hours for us to work, and the rest of eight hours to educate yourself and help others. Right. I like that. So for the young barbers, if you're learning, help somebody also. Mm-hmm. Teach them. How, how have you received press at this? Because this is something special and I'm sure... You know, the news and everybody probably wanted to come out. You know, We had PIX11, we had uh, Eyewitness News, we had the New York One, we had GQ, uh, Forbes is coming. It's, it's, it, the word is getting out there. And how are you getting the word out? Is it word of mouth? Is it's it, word of mouth. It's word of mouth. So you didn't have uh, no PR. No. Just, that's good. No. I mean, that's when you're doing something special. It it's one of a, one of a kind, I think. Yes, it, it is pretty unique. Pretty unique. I honestly, when I was doing this, I was not concentrating on a PR and become somebody. No, I was again doing this to give respect and to show the world that barbering is an artistry. Mm-hmm. It's an art. Mm-hmm. A lot of people disagree, but I disagree with them. Right, it's an art form. It's an art. And I think the more you go back, the more you see how much of an art form it is. So like I had a customer today. He didn't cut his hair for seven months. He sat in my chair. He goes like, how do you like it, sir? I don't know. So now you have to create something for him. It means you are the designer. Right. You have to look at his face. You have to look at his ears. You have to see the 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 the, 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 the complexion of a face mm-hmm. and to perform a haircut. Mm-hmm. And he has to like it. You will hope so. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> yeah, good. Gave me a $20 tip. Good. How much are your haircuts in? in uh, we have three packages. We have bronze, we have silver, and we have gold package. Um, Tell us about And I will get packages. you to the gold package, which people are <laughs> going to love it. The The bronze package includes uh, just a regular cut with the wash. Of course, it uh, comes with the custom comb, mm-hmm. personalized comb. And that price is... Price right. Is. There's the silver package. It's wash before and after. You get the personalized comb. You get one free rear mirror and co. I have my own product line, which is based on essential oils, paraben and uh, sodium chloride free. Mm-hmm. And the gold package is $118. Uh, 
It includes, I also, since I was a jeweler, I created, uh, I didn't show it to you today, I'm sorry. It's Next okay. time you come in. All right. I created the golden diamond scissors and a comb. Wow. So they get the haircut with golden scissors and golden comb. Gold plated? Like Real gold, solid Real gold. Solid 94 gold. grams of uh, 14 karat gold and mm -hmm. one carat in diamonds. And uh, same thing with the scissors. It's 97 grams and 3.30 carats in diamonds. Mm -hmm. Everything solid. There's no gold plated. People were concerned. So one guy took it to the lab on 47th Street. Yeah. It's no, no. It's all, it's all, it's all 14 karat gold. Uh, that's pretty good for that price point. <laughs> and I might, we serve, I might have to come and get the. And we serve gold. black caviar with that. Black caviar, like Jacob the jeweler, because <laughs> J I used to work with Jacob and I admire his work. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, Jacob's pretty famous in the hip hop community. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. Um, I don't know what else there is to cover, man. You pretty much. Tell me, what's the difference of cutting in the Soviet Union and cutting here? Here, what's the difference? It's much easier here. The tools. I mean, now they have it, but when we were there, they had no Oster machines. They had no Andes machines. They used to do everything by scissors and a razor. Mm -hmm. The haircut used to take forty-five minutes to an hour. Mm -hmm. Here we got easy-going tools. I noticed that people coming from different places. Based on the economics of that place, they they know how they know how to get the job done with less. And then when they come here and they have the opportunity of all these choices of tools, they're usually like better barbers, like guys that come from the Caribbean and places like that. You know, they might do all the whole cut with a scissor and a comb or one one clipper and dialing it down, opening it up, pushing the blade up and pulling the blade back just to do a fade. Then they come here and they have all these tools. It just makes them like a, a, a more well-rounded barber. Do you find that too? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also you should give, uh, you know, I'm, I'm studying right now. A lot of people don't know about shaves. Mm -hmm. Do you know that each time we shave, we're performing a minor surgery to ourselves? Yeah, because a, a, a thin coat of uh, skin comes off. When the comes skin on is our plate. biggest organ in our body. <laughs> yes. So it's very important for the guys when they shave to mm -hmm. prep the skin the right way. Right. G give me the procedure for those that might not know. What do you mean? The prepping and, and the so Well, on. the prepping is I first like take time, take a hot towel, mm -hmm. prep the skin, then get a nice pre-shave oil if you have one. If not... Take time when you lather the cream. Take three, four minutes extra mm -hmm. for to massage your skin. Right, soften up the skin. Soften the skin. The, the hair follicle and the bristle. There's five points on our face. There's a good question that I ask, and a lot of people, rabbis even, could not answer me. Why religious people like priests and rabbis don't shave? They have beards, do you know? No, I don't know. Because we have five points on our face where you can cut yourself and bleed to death. That's why it became a custom and religious not to shave. Mm. Because the guys used to die. What are those points on the face? One, two, three, four, and five. All right. So guys should know that. Yeah. I mean, now with our blades, you're not going to cut yourself and bleed to death. But back in the days, they had no razors. Right. They had those big knives. Or those stones. <laughs> That's why it became a custom. Right. Tell people how they can find you on uh, social media. I have an Instagram page. It's Arthur Riamir or NYC Barber Museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else we got? Riamir is my company, but I did not want to put Riamir Barbershop Museum because I wanted to make this into the into the city commute right. destination. Right. And if I would put Riamir, it's a personal right. thing. No, I wanted to be make this. You want to welcome into everybody. Everybody, yes. 
Well, thank you for stopping by. Man. I thank really you, appreciate man. it. God bless you, man. Um, and stop by again when you have we something will. new going on. God willing. And I will definitely be by again and get some more shots. You're always welcome, man. You know, if you ever have an overflow, you could always, you know, <laughs> I'll add your boy. God. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you, my bro. brother. Thank you. Yeah, I've been cutting these heads for years. It made me a master. There's rules to the shit to get money faster. A cut by cut booklet for you to get your game on track. Not your line.